This is a manual focus 240 gram 2700 dollar Leica Summicron M mount 50 millimeter f2, a benchmark street lens for the better part of half a century. We own that one. This, on the other hand, is the autofocusing more than one full kilogram, just about half the price, $1,500 Sigma 35.12 DGDN art lens and Leica L mount, destined to become a legend in its own right for outstanding speed and resolution, Mongo size and weight, and uh, suboptimal autofocus performance, at least in L mount. It's a loner I've held on to for far too long, but fortunately Sigma has come to realize as has just about everyone else in the industry, how long it takes me to really understand what it is that I'm seeing and then share that with you. So thanks, guys, for your patience. Now, this is another lens we own for what used to be my, but is now inarguably Claudia's L-mount Leica CL, the 428-gram, $2,500 autofocusing Leica Sumalux TL 35.1.4. This is just a spectacular optic, punching nosebleed above its sensor weight class, superior to my eye to the Summicron M50 on an M10 at approximately the same effective field of view and the shallowest depth of field. Superior to any zoom from anyone I've ever seen at that field of view. Superior to almost all comparable field of view optics I've used across sensor formats. And then, finally, we have this guy. Another Sigma autofocusing L-mount lens, the 215-gram, 550-buck, 45-2.8 DGDN contemporary lens, which just happens to be, if you've exhausted your funds acquiring a full-frame L-mount body and don't already have other glass for it, an admittedly unlikely scenario, but you get the idea, I think the first lens you should get for it. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and today I want to give you my take on Sigma's 45 2.8 L-mount variant. But before we get into the details, speaking of street photography, I am really delighted to announce that we've just finalized the schedule and opened up registration for our 2020 series of Streets of New York street photography workshops. What can I say? Come join us and have a blast. Space is limited, so if you're interested, hop over to www.3bmep.com slash streets2 to learn more. But what I'll tell you right now is it's a different kind of workshop. A wonderful mix of technique, sure. Shooting and review, of course. Lots of it. But also history, philosophy, ethics, and private tours not only of a couple of extraordinary photographic institutions, but the opportunity to visit iconic locations inhabited by or shot by legendary street photographers. It's also a lovely opportunity to spend time with a small, intimate group of like-minded people in one of the greatest places on earth. No, no. Okay, I admit it. As far as I'm concerned, the greatest place on earth for the genre. Maybe rekindle your joy for the medium, perhaps even hone your artistic voice and ambitions. It's always an amazing experience with incredible people. Making it even more special, and with thanks once again to our friends at Hasselblad, we'll be holding our class sessions at their beautiful New York Experience Studio in NoHo, Manhattan. So, right. Please visit www.3bmep.com where you can also click on the link for workshops right there on the top menu or on the little hamburger all the way to the right and check it out. Claudia and I hope to see you there. Okay, let's get back to the Sigma 45. Look, I'm going to keep this brief. Where the 35 1.2 is Mongo, fast and expensive, and a little iffy when it comes to autofocusing. Again, at least in L-mount. The 45 2.8, as you can see, is petite. Relatively slow, by definition, and cheap, in comparison to the other glass I've just mentioned at any rate. With no autofocus issues in my time with it. It's also, really, beautifully built, lovely to hold and manipulate, an ergonomic and aesthetic match to the Panasonic Lumix S1 triplets, our own full-frame Leica SL2, and APS-C Leica CL. Real aperture ring. 
slightly wider than the 50, less perspective distortion than the 35, and with a very smart trade-off of a maximum aperture of 2.8 rather than 2, 1.4, or that wild 1.2, the 2.8 being a more usable minimum depth of field in any case 99% of the time, it's a brilliant set of compromises. Especially when mated to the high resolution S1 or SL2, where punching in was one of the primary reasons we got the SL2. I'd say the Sigma 45 2.8 is the budget all-rounder L-mount optic, suitable for everything from landscape to portrait with beautiful results. Like this. say, given these results, I don't mind that the lens isn't, for example, image stabilized. Because it's so small, lightweight, and short at only 45 millimeters, I can easily hand hold it down to one over twice the reciprocal shutter speed, even a little slower, on our CL. Though remember on the CL, it is effectively a 70 millimeter f4, and far below that on the image stabilized SL2 or S1 triplets. But I do have nits. Three, to be precise. One, it is a little softer wide open than I'd like, but hey, let's not get piggy. The same can be said for most lenses, including my fifth generation Summicron M50. Two, there is more spherochromatic aberration than I'd like. Now, I don't mean to be piggy about this either. I've seen this problem on most modern lenses from everyone, including Leica and Zeiss, but it bothers me. It bothers me on all of them. It's aesthetically objectionable to me and is not easily corrected in post. But of course, your mileage may vary. And then there's three. While it would be harsh, wrong, to assert that this is an example of Ralph Waldo Emerson's A Foolish Consistency as the Hobgoblin of Little Minds, I don't particularly like the otherwise quite pleasant design vocabulary carried over to the lens hood. Lens hoods shouldn't look like this, or feel like this. But that's just me, and I have to admit, their lens hoods come on or off, normal or reversed, without complaint all day long, and you cannot say that about all lens hoods. On the other hand, were you to assert that one can buy a faster and or lighter Plastic Fantastic 51.8 from Canon, Nikon, or Sony for anywhere between 125 and 250 bucks? I'd agree with you. If you were to assert that you can buy the optically superior, I mean, just outstanding, super sharp, edge to edge, even wide open, incredibly well corrected and faster, Nikkor Z51.8. In fact, currently my favorite, call it, moderately priced standard for just 50 bucks more, I'd agree with you again. If you were to turn to me and say, Hugh, what about Fujifilm's $400 XF35 II or $600 35 1.4 with relatively similar fields of view and faster maximum apertures because they are only an APS-C coverage lens set? I'd say, great question. I'm sure, too, that many of you will have your own version of what about this lens or that one, including, for example, something like the excellent Zeiss Batis 40 F2 or Sigma's own superb by all accounts, though I've not gone hands-on with it, 40 millimeter f1.4, but both are about twice the price of the 45 2.8, and at least in the case of Zeiss, only available on the Sony system. There are also the Sigma 45 2.8's closest field of view native L mount alliance competitors. Panasonic's, okay, two stops faster, but almost one kilo, absolutely four times the price, $2,300 S Pro Lumix 51.4. Never mind like it's nine times the price. One stop faster. Sumicron SL52. 
Funny thing about that, though. At a cool five grand, the Sumicron SL50 F2 manages to be three quarters the weight and half the volume of that S-Pro. And if my experiences with the Sumicron SL35 and 90 are any indication, they are. My conversation with Leica optical designer Peter Carbe, any indication, it is. And the MTF chart for it is any indication. It is. That Sumicron SL promises to be the new benchmark, the king of all 50 or 55 millimeter standard primes, the absolute best and highest use of an Elmont body at that focal length, adapted or not, to be confirmed. In the end, that is the rub. If you are committed to the L-mount system, the 45 2.8 is, as I asserted earlier, the budget all-arounder, call it the budget jewel in the current L-mount alliance catalog. Unbeatable if it ticks your particular boxes. But it is also the case that Sony, Fujifilm, Panasonic, and Olympus, Sigma's forays into APS-C and Micro Four Thirds notwithstanding, we own, for example, their 16 1.4 and 30 1.4 and those mounts respectively in like them, have had much more experience developing small, moderately priced, super crispy, short flange distance purpose built glass. Canon and Nikon appear to have had the pockets and the will, perhaps, to play catch up faster with brand new designs. And again, for 99% of us, 99% of the time, I love this qualifier. Full frame is not a meaningful advantage, trumped instead by the practical size, weight, and budget advantage is accruing to, and how much one actually can extract from, excellent crop sensor glass and sensors. None of which is to take anything away from what Sigma has already accomplished here, nor diminish my fervent hope that they continue working hard to bring from the ground up new, purpose-built, full-frame glass to market with the IQ for which they are known. Auto-focusing performance on par with the best of the rest. And small size at industry leading prices the 45 2.8 is a good omen they will mm -hmm.